So I decided I needed a Pegasus for my Dark Elves. And I have the uh, original Pegasus model, but I never really liked it. It's, I don't know, it just sucks. That's all I can say about it. So um, I'm going to try to make my own here. And what I have is a Chaos Marauder horse. And I have some Scourge wings for uh, Dark Eldar Scourge. And uh, a few other bips and bobs. The uh, main other portion I need and have are some Cold One Knight legs. Now, the first step is I have to get the legs to fit around the horse because the horse is a lot uh, wider than the cold ones. And just putting them on really splays the legs out quite uh, ridiculously. It doesn't fit the same. So, first thing I'm going to do is put together the halves of the horse and then start trimming away at the sides here. And I don't want to be too precise because whatever I gouge away is going to be covered by the uh, the skirt. And I actually already did this once. I made a uh, a general on a horse, so I already have some experience doing this part. And I just had to scrape away a whole bunch and just keep test fitting and uh, scraping until I got it, uh, you know, the proper fit. You can see his legs are not as wide as the other one. So that is step number one. So there we go. Uh, that went a lot quicker because I already did this one, so I kind of knew the areas that needed to be hacked away. So hopefully you can see how much got chopped down. Mainly it's this section right here, kind of inverted rather. It was, you know, much more full of material, and I basically cut a groove out on both sides. So. If I could just hold it in place for the moment. You can see it fits. Legs are a bit closer now. So, next step is um, glue the legs in place and then work out how to uh, attach the wings. Um, these are Dark Eldar Scourge wings, which they're a little smaller than I would have liked. Now the problem with Pegasus, Pegasus Eye is that um, get a better light there. There we go. Is uh, the wings kind of interfere with the rider, so placing these is the uh, the big issue. They have to go somewhere in the shoulder blades, and uh, I have to work them around the legs of the rider. So once I get those legs in place, I can start fiddling around and figuring out exactly where to place these. I think I'm going to add a bit of wire in here to extend them out a little bit because following the line of the plastic, they go together like that, which I'm not really happy with. I'd rather spread it out a bit like that. But then I have the issue of it hitting the legs. So once again, it's uh, it's a fiddly process. But I'll have a better idea once I get the rider, the rider's legs uh, attached. Ooh, maybe down. Down's not that bad. So I'm still trying to decide exactly how I want to place the wings. Um, but I should do this first. I probably should have done this before I even added the legs. But uh, I need to. Um, change the position of this rear leg here. Um, I'm going to have them kind of flying up. So I got this foot is pretty well uh, positioned already. There's this little piece of like turf on the bottom of the hoof, which uh, fortunately I just had to cut off on this side and uh, gives me a nice rearing position. However, this front leg is going to be sticking out rather ridiculously. So gotta put it back. And that's pretty easy with plastic. This is why I should have done this before. Because that leg's in the in the the writer's leg is a bit on the way here. So I'm just 
use my razor saw. Get a nice clean cut. So there we go, leg is off. And uh, when you're repositioning any sort of limbs on either humans or horses here, um, all you have to do is take a, uh, a wedge out of the uh, material. And um, some, you may think, you know, you just want to pin this back in place like here and then fill in the gap with green stuff. However, it, the leg is going to be too long then. And um, so whenever you're repositioning something, say you like, I can't really show you well on video here, but take your arm, if you have a figure with an arm that's straight out and you want to turn it so it's 90 degrees, um, if you just cut it and try to glue it and putty it up, the arm's going to be too long. So all you have to do is take a wedge out, in the case of your arm, take a wedge out of the inside of the uh, your elbow area and then glue that back in place and uh, you'll have the right positioning so now I just need to cut the back off of here I'm just double checking my measurements here make sure I got this where I want it this may have the leg a bit further back So there's my little wedge out. <clears throat> I may take off a little more here. I'm just trying to decide exactly how I want to position it. Alright, so I'm going to have to fiddle with this a little bit off camera until I figure out exactly where I want it. But uh, once I get it in place, um, ideally you take out the wedge and then you have a two smooth flat areas where you can glue it back onto however uh, since I may do this a bit extreme like put the leg all the way back I may still have some putty work to do what you can also do if it's just a small gap you can take some scrap styrene and stick it in there and then use uh, plastic cement to melt it and you get a really really good bond so yeah let me go fiddle with this a bit so there we go, it's a bit, uh, just a tad, oops, nasty looking. Uh, because I was going from all way, f all full forward position, more into a full back position, uh, there's still quite a gap there. Fortunately, uh, with the skirt and everything and a bit of, uh, putty, I'll be able to clean that up. I also had to shift the leg out a little bit because this leg was actually bent a little bit inward, which you really couldn't see as uh, when the leg was forward, but when you put it back it was really kind of knocking next to the other hoof, so I had to push it that way a little bit. This way. But there we go. So that was that to be puttied up once it dries. Should be good to go. It also gives me a uh, secondary mounting position depending on how I uh, build the base. So I have two pins going into the base rather than just the one. So once this dries, I can work on finally figuring out how to place these wings. Which I have still not made up my mind. I'm either thinking of going down, like uh, you know, it's just about to take off that first big gust from the wings, you know, trying to lift itself off the ground. Or I may put them something like that, just because it looks cool. So the the rider in the uh, Pegasus is drying right now, and um, I'll show you that in a minute. But in the meantime, I'm working on the base. Uh, what I have here is the uh, 40 mil base, and I got a cork, just a simple wine cork that I cut off one half, and I made a rough shape with. Uh, you just take some sort of 
carving tool or whatever you have and just basically peel off the round on the edges until you get whatever rough shape you're looking for. And cork makes it makes good rock. I'm not a huge fan of it because I mean it does look like rock, but to me, whenever I be where yeah, whenever I see it, all I see is cork. Even when it's like painted and gussied up. But uh, I'm gonna experiment here a bit, and I'm using the cork mainly just as a base. We're building up a larger, uh, a larger structure. I'm going to cover this with a epoxy putty and do a few other things with it. So right now, I'm just use, going to use the extra cork bits to flesh out my design. This way, I don't have to build a, a giant mound of expensive epoxy putty. So, the epoxy putty's on, and I'm making a slate base. And how that's done is, all you have to do is take some epoxy putty and um, flatten it out real thin, wet it down a bit so there's no finger uh, prints left in it, and um, just uh, let it dry. And then once it's dry, you could uh, take some pliers and break off tiny chunks. And create just little bits of uh, slate looking pieces and you get a really nice texture where you rip it apart looks just like slate so the base is covered with epoxy putty and now all I'm doing is taking these little pieces and trimming them as needed and then sticking them in the soft epoxy wherever I want them. So once I get put enough in, so uh, I'm happy, let the epoxy dry, and then I'll probably go back and do a bit more epoxy um, wherever I think it's needed. You know, the slate is probably going to have uh, dirt underneath it it's rather than sticking out like a, a shelf there. So like that area may get a bit more. And then I'll cover it with glue and do gravel on it. So any place that's not covered with slate uh, will be dirt. Maybe I'll add a few other roundish rocks to it. Forgot to mention a couple things here with the base. Um, now that I have all the slates where I want them, I'm taking an extra piece here and I'm just texturing the soft epoxy so that way I don't have to cover everything with uh, gravel if I don't want to because this is giving it the same texture as the slate that's already on. I'm trying to don't turn it because that's going to ruin the effect. So I have to do it all this way. And the second thing I forgot to mention is the epoxy should hold uh, the dried slate pieces in place, but not absolutely necessary. So once the uh, epoxy is dry, you want to go back and just give a little tug on all your uh, little slate pieces and if they're loose or if they pop out just uh, apply a little super glue and stick them back in and you should be good to go so here is the finished project um, with the wings obviously see what position I finally decided on so, uh, no particular reason I don't know it just seemed to work better more traditional I guess um, a little bit of putty work. I think I'm going to need a bit more. It's uh, a bit rough right now. Um, the <clears throat> horse's harness currently goes right into the wings, which uh, is a little odd. But um, 
my thinking is you know the membrane is a bit flexible so it's the membrane doesn't attach to the body it's more like it just attaches at the arm um, kind of like you know with feathers on a bird they appear to be attached to the uh, arm but actually it's just the bone and the skin and the feathers are kind of excess let's go with that shall we uh, so still cleaning up the seam lines a little bit going down the center of the horse it's going to take a bit more work um, the horn I was originally going to cut off the horn from the original dark pegasus but uh, I found this in my bits box it's from a uh, Nurgle sorcerer's helm and I uh, just added a round bit of uh, styrene so you know that's kind of a lip as it comes through the uh, the horses the horse head armor with the uh, knight itself I ended up going with uh, more cold one uh, knight bits so it's cold one knight torso uh, along with the arm and the shield I I didn't have because I got these bits off of eBay apparently I did not have the actual shield arm I did have an arm holding a mace so I just had to cut it off at the uh, at the wrist and uh, attach the shield so that worked fine and then the sword pieces I did have um, I did trim it slightly so the sword is pointing a bit more forward and more of a, a charge type motion now the the helmet is actually uh, from the the new dark uh, dark elf dragon kit I was going to use a corsair head but uh, unfortunately it doesn't fit because of uh, all the corsair heads have hair blowing off in this direction and it's uh, it was it wouldn't fit because of the arm so I used a spare head from the dragon and um, this head piece is a separate piece and it's about half the size it originally was uh, it was the one you get in the kit is just ridiculously huge and it looks stupid and secondly it wouldn't fit it was hitting the arm so I trimmed it down and made this instead it's a bit more samurai looking I like it and there's all our gaps filled on the legs and you know what I think I need to go through and add something over here I gotta see if I have a scabbard or something I can attach here maybe some pouches or something so I'll add that a little bit later and the base again just a lot of epoxy putty dried and wet and I still need to go back and um, once this dries overnight I'll go back and uh, glue on some gravel here and there so that is it one dark elf dark pegasus all done for about 15 bucks or so. I think it's looking pretty good. I just gotta see if I can get it painted. Thanks for watching.